I'm Ernie, and I'm going to take you through a quick tour of our Uniform Domestic Relations Forms application. In this video, I'll refer to it by its call letters, UDRF. By the way, we've published two other YouTube demonstration videos, one on our child support application and one on our spousal support application. Both are about 10 minutes long, and we'll be sticking to those time constraints in this demonstration video as well. In our previous videos, we've showed you how quickly you can do a child support computation or a spousal support calculation, but in this video, we're going to take a slightly different tack, and instead of showing you how fast you can complete a form or affidavit, like a separation agreement, for example, we're going to walk you through some key application features. Aside from our demonstration videos, if you haven't seen our instructional videos, you can take a look at them by going to YouTube and searching Pure to Spring software. We've published about a dozen videos, and the demonstration videos that we're talking about are there among them, so you shouldn't have any problem locating them. As we get started, I want to make it clear that although by using our Pure to Spring software applications you can perform a child support calculation or a basic spousal support calculation in about five minutes, the goal of our applications is just not about being fast. For one thing, fast usually goes hand in hand with sloppiness and making mistakes. The goal of our family law applications is to get you there, yes, faster, but also with better and more precise results. I'd also like to mention that even users of the current version of UDRF may pick up a tip or two about some of the hidden features in UDRF, as well as getting an introduction to some new features that we've introduced in this latest revision. Okay, let's start by taking a look at the general information worksheet. It's on the screen right now. This screen contains about 150 fields of common information, such as a judge's name, the case number, the county name, the party's names and addresses, the date and place of marriage, child-related data, and similar facts that you find repeated over and over in the forms and the affidavits. Consider a, a simple example like the case number. In a typical family law case, you're going to be entering it on the affidavit of income and expenses, the affidavit of property, the parenting proceeding affidavit, the health insurance affidavit, the complaint for divorce or the petition for dissolution, the separation agreement, and the judgment entry. That's just the case number. The same is true for the judge's name, the county name, the party's names, and many of the other fields that you see here on the worksheet. When you use UDRF, you enter that information one time and everything is transferred automatically to all the affidavits and, the, and forms. How much time does this save? Well, over the course of a case, think about how much time it takes to type these 100 or so bits of information on a dozen or more documents. To get an idea, try type, typing something 1,200 times and you'll find out how much time it saves to have UDRF transfer it all in the blink of an eye. Incidentally, there's a second short page of the worksheet that has attorney related information and that also automatically populates all the other forms where necessary. Okay, let's take a look at an example by opening a sample file and viewing the complaint for divorce. With the information in the general information worksheet already completed, Preparing the complaint is a simple matter of almost doing nothing. The complaint for divorce is nearly completed its, in its entirety. On page 2, item 5, you'll need to check the grounds. We'll choose incompatibility here. And on page 3, you'll need to check the applicable relief provisions, such as restoring a prior name, payment of attorney fees, and court costs. Now the information that you see transferred already is coming from the general information worksheet, but you can even take automation one step further by populating any of the fields in the default file so that when you start a new file, fields that usually don't change from one client to the next are completed from the get-go. 
Typical would be case information like the court name, the county name, judges' names, jurisdictional and venue criteria, and attorney information. I'm going to show you. It works like this. First, you open the default file. Then you go to the general information worksheet and you complete the desired fields in the default file. Now you'll see I've already got a couple completed already, but I'll change the county name. And now I'll click the Save button. And now when I click the New button, or every time I start UDRF or select the New button, that default information appears even before I start. In fact, the entire file, 150 pages of forms and literally thousands of fields can be set like this. Every field on every affidavit and on every form can be set like this. Note that just because you set a default field, it doesn't mean that you can't change the field in the actual file as the situation warrants. You can, whenever and wherever you want. Now moving right along, I'm going to reopen our sample file and let's take a look at the affidavit of income and expenses. You'll be using this affidavit whether a married couple have children or not and regardless of if, if whether you're working on a divorce or dissolution. I've opened the sample file so that I don't have to waste time completing the affidavit. But let's take a look at page 3, section 3, expenses, part A, monthly housing expenses. Now, you see I've completed the mortgage and utility fields and all the other fields there, just to give you an idea, and there's a total at the bottom. Now, if clients were perfect, you'd never need to change anything. Of course, if they were perfect, they probably wouldn't be getting divorced. But anyway, if I need to change any of the figures in this column, let's say because the client brought in additional information. Let's add $56, let's, or let's not add, but let's rather change the telephone bill to $56.28. And you see what happens when I hit the tab key? Now, it took place so fast you might have missed it, but as soon as I made the change to the telephone bill, the total monthly housing expenses down here at the bottom updated instantaneously. Two things I didn't need to worry about was forgetting to update the total or making a mistake as I re-added the column of numbers. Now there are a dozen or more similar columns of numbers on the Affidavit of Income and Expenses and they all work the same way. That's what I was referring to when I said the goal of the application is not simply doing things quicker but also doing things better. How are you doing this now? Would you use white out on the correction and then white out on the total and then white out on the grand total on page six? Yeah, I hope you didn't forget that the section A total wasn't the only number that needed updating. Well, with UDRF, you don't need to waste time thinking about those types of details and risking potential mistakes. Or maybe you'd need to reopen the court's web form and redo it. That approach has some real problems. First and foremost is the fact that the available doc and PDF files are what we call dumb templates. That is, like the cleaning person who doesn't do windows, these forms don't do math. So you've got to get out the calculator and start recalculating. Another significant drawback is that these dumb templates don't transfer repetitive information either. Another substantial drawback is that each form is a separate unlinked file. So whereas UDRF transfers, transfers information across the board to all the affidavits and forms, the dumb templates, well, they don't transfer anything. I suppose that's great for a layperson doing their case pro se, but a paying client expects a professional to be using their time more productively. Incidentally, the same is true if you're using your own custom word processing templates instead of the court forms. Now, if you can't appreciate that as a huge time saver, how about this? Automatic continuation pages. All the affidavits have this same feature, but I'm going to switch over to the separation agreement so you can have a look at that form. If you've ever used the court's web forms, you know already that space is at a premium. 
Example, the debts section. For enumerating debts related to personal property on page 4, the separation agreement has four lines. Now many, or perhaps most soon-to-be-parted couples, have more debts and more debt arrangements than will fit on four lines. And for that reason, the standard instructions advise listing them on a separate sheet. The same is true of financial accounts and about a dozen or two dozen other separate places on the separation agreement. If you're not using RDF, your only recourse is to create separate documents in a word processor and use those as attachments. It's a messy and disorganized way to do things. For one thing, your separation, could end, your separation agreement, that is, could end up being comprised of multiple files. UDRF avoids this problem by providing almost 100 continuation schedules that can be brought into play with the click of a mouse. Watch, I'm going to add a continuation page to the debt section and, and simply by right clicking the mouse and selecting display continuation page. Now I'm going, to, I'm going to paste in some filler text just to demonstrate. It's that easy. And when it comes time to print, the continuation page will be inserted in the appropriate place in the document. Now another fine feature of UDRF is that all your client data is saved in one file. Complaint for divorce, reply to counterclaim, multiple affidavits, separation agreement, judgment entry, parenting plan, and everything else, all in one place, in one file. And that's great for keeping everything together and within easy access. By contrast, the court's web forms, and even your own custom templates, can only be or are usually saved as individual files. And that means your client information is scattered in a dozen different places, making it easy to make mistakes and real easy to lose information. Finally, just about all of our legal and tax applications, um, like UDRF, lets you preview and print documents from your word processor. I'll show you. I'll preview the separation agreement. Now this is a great feature for a number of reasons. For one thing, if there's any formatting adjustments like possibly highlighting something in red or tweaking a margin, whatever you'd like to change before printing, what better place to make these changes than in your word processor? Same with content editing. So if you'd like to insert information that is not provided for in the Supreme Court's published forms, you can interlineate or you can add footnotes in the margins via your word processor. Finally, busy law offices are busy being law offices, and therefore sometimes law office personnel are not as computer savvy as they'd like to be. Now while that may be true in a general sort of way, there's one thing at which all attorneys and law office staff persons are experts at, and that's word processing. So you should feel right at home previewing and printing your documents with UDRF. In conclusion, remember, not every domestic case you're involved in becomes Kramer versus Kramer in magnitude. More often than not, it's in your client's best interest, and your best interest as well, to handle their matter expeditiously and still with the highest level of competence. UDRF allows you to do just that. Your best work in the shortest amount of time. At the same time, it frees you and or your staff up to do meaningful legal work instead of, well, like I said before, retyping the case number a hundred times. Now, there's much more that can be said about UDRF, but that's about all the time I've got. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you'll see that UDRF can be a vital application in your law of practice. That's why it was cited by the American Bar Association as top family legal software. So again, thanks for watching and take care.